Good evening, everyone. I'm Peter Tawil. Welcome back to Dentlinks. It is my pleasure to present to you tonight a very interesting case that was approached in a multidisciplinary way that consists of the segmental osteotomy in the correction of the anterior open bite. The patient is a 26 year old male with no uh, significant medical history. He obviously suffered from an anterior open bite, a class 2 malocclusion. He's suffering also from a tongue thrust. He is a mouth breather, has some uh, dental plaque deposits, an insufficient oral hygiene, some um, caries also. The patient comes in with the chief complaint of his anterior open bite and wanted a solution uh, for his malocclusion. Upon uh, radiological analysis, we confirmed that number eight was ankylose. Now, it turned out that number eight also had a trauma during the teenage years of the patient. It was avulsed and then replaced back in place. Unfortunately, a couple of years later, when the patient came to consult, the tooth was ankylosed. Along the line, we also had a periapical pathosis from endodontical origin, and this on the lateral incisor. We also took a cone beam CT to confirm the ankylosis. So, our treatment options here obviously is to address the anterior open bite with an orthodontic treatment. However, for the ankylose tooth, we had a couple of different options. We can do a decoronation procedure that consists of cutting down the crown, having the soft tissue grow over the crown, and building a pontic site. This technique was described in the early 80s and is a valuable technique that could be used in case of ankylose teeth. We could do a built up, composite built up, or even crown the tooth. Uh, however, in this particular situation of an anterior open bite, the crown or the built up is not a good option. This is a, the built up is an option when the tooth is just uh, right close to the occlusion. We can opt for a, an advanced surgery of distract, distraction osteogenesis. It consists of uh, the installment of a distractor and uh, distracting the bone at the rate of one millimeter per day. This is a complicated procedure that is not easily manageable in a private practice setup. Um, so we did not go for it. Another great option was the segmental osteotomy, meaning cutting down the bone and the block in one piece or one block without reflecting the palatine mucosa that is essential for the nourishment of the block and reposition the ankylose tooth in the correct position in the mouth. Another option also is the extraction, but however, the extraction in that situation would be a terrible, would be of a terrible consequence in the aesthetics, soft and hard tissue, and very hard to reconstruct in case we want to replace the missing tooth with an implant. So the diagnosis here is a mild to moderate chronic gingivitis. The patient is suffering from class two malocclusion with an anterior open bite. He also has a tongue thrust and is a mouth breather. This also partially due to the anterior open bite. He has an ankylose central incisor to the, due to the trauma. And some previous attempts of wartal treatment was done, but without any success. Treatment plan was first and foremost do the orthodontic treatment to correct the maxillary anterior open bite. Do the segmental osteotomy on the central incisor 
to reposition the ankylose tooth in the proper three-dimensional position. Also, complete an apicoectomy and curettage of the periapical abscess on the lateral incisor. In that case, it was not needed to do a retrograde filling. The root canal was sufficient. Stabilization of the res uh, reposition block and teeth for five to six months. And then finish up with the prosthetic rehabilitation of the anterior maxilla, the six anterior teeth, using Emax crowns. This is the clinical situation, 18 months post-orthodontic treatment and just prior of doing the segmental osteotomy. What we uh, envision on doing is three different surgical cuts using the piezo surgery or the piezoelectric device on a mesial, subapical, and distal part of the tooth. This will involve both buccal until the palatal plate. However, we did not reflect the palatal mucosa, and this again to ensure the nourishment of the bone block. As you see here in the image, you have the piezo surgery device that will go distal, subapical, and mesial of the tooth. If you look into the literature, a couple of case reports were done using this technique or similar to this technique in the case report done by Isaacson in 2001. Uh, the, the patient was treated with uh, surgery and distraction of osteogenesis and obviously ortho treatment in a very similar situation. Another case report also completed in the Korean team by Kang in 2016 and this also involving uh, a single tooth osteotomy. However, here the little glitch was they added a computer added design and manufactured surgical guide that helped them position the tooth in the proper three dimension position. Another study done on 27 patients that was treated with a similar technique, uh, segmental subapical osteotomy on mandibular incisors to correct the angles of these incisors. And on, 31, uh, on uh, 27 patients followed for 31 months, they had very adequate clinical and radiological results. So this is the situation, 18 months post initiation of the ortho treatment. As you see, a very nice uh, closure of the anterior open bite and an adequate class one occlusion. However, the tooth in question, the central, the right central incisor, did not move as expected. So what we did next was accessing the anterior maxilla, specifically the central incisor in the full thickness flap. We uh, sectioned and used the piezo surgery devices on mesial and distal and subapical cuts going from the palatal all the way to the uh, sorry going from the buccal all the way to the palatal mucosa we then curated out properly the periapical pathosis on the central on the lateral incisor and properly cleaned out with hydrogen peroxide and so on and so forth and this was done also in uh, uh, the same time, we did a apicoectomy on the lateral incisor. The last picture on the lower right, sand, uh, right hand of the screen, right side of the screen, you see a chisel, and this is very important. The chisel was inserted in the subapical part, and we made sure that the block was dislodged properly from its bonus or osseous surrounding. The only, the only tissue that is still grabbing properly the block is the palatal mucosa. And because of its thickness and because of its 
uh, high nourishment and high blood vessels uh, in it, it will ensure the vitality of the block without necrosis. We then reposition the block with the bracket in the arch wire and properly stabilized with an arch wire and composites uh, and ligature wires. The block was rock solid inside the arch wire. And this is the final position in which we want the tooth to be. Now, uh, in this situation, it is possible to do so because the interosseous gap, if you want, or the movement we want to achieve is about three millimeters. Now, if the movement is more than that, then we should opt for a distraction osteogenesis uh, technique. Here in this case, it was possible to do so because the distance was not that great. It was possible to reposition it directly. Things that we did, and this is the flap suture. This is the panoramic x-ray before, and this is the panoramic x-ray after. This is the result five months post surgical or segmental osteotomy. As you can see, in a very, very adequate result with the total closure of the anterior open bite and the perfect stability of the repositioned tooth. This is an x-ray showing uh, the need for a new root canal on number eight. We also have a, an external resorption of the root that is quite common with trauma, with trauma on the tooth. This is originally because of the original trauma that was done on the tooth. It is an irre irreversible process. The patient knows that. And he knows that one day he might lose that tooth because of the resorption. However, uh, the position of the tooth now enable us to place an, a future implant in the right three-dimensional position. And uh, also, by doing this technique, we were able to give a lot, a couple of years to the patient with his own natural dentition. So this is five months uh, post uh, surgery, and the auto treatment was done by Dr. Mehan Bufasa in uh, UAE, Ras al Khaimah. And this is the result, also done by Dr. Mehan Bufasa, a beautiful prosthetic rehabilitation using Emax crowns. As you can see, an impeccable integration of the pink and white aesthetic scores. And um, the patient was very, very happy of this result. And this is another view of this final prosthetic rehabilitation. It's important to note that the, that the root canal was uh, redone on the center incisor. Also, uh, an application of MTA, methyl trioxide aggregate, in the pulp chamber was done to limit the extent of the resorption. This is just to show you how the patient started, consulted us with anterior open bite and ankylose tooth. This is the situation 18 months post ortho. This is it with the block dislodge or the segmental osteotomy. Tooth in place and stabilization for proper stabilization for five months. This is five months post op at debonding moment. And this is the final result with Emax crowns. And this is the nice smile that the patient gained uh, again with a beautiful confident smile and he was thrilled of the result with this nice aesthetic result i leave you all and i thank you all for your attention